Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. My co-host is Bricky, and he'll be hitting us with some, I'm assuming, really strange Warhammer 40k facts, perhaps some ridiculous facts. Uh, but if you enjoy today's podcast, head over to patreon.com slash adeptusridiculous, where you can get access to our Discord, bloopers if they happen, some real nice HD posters. Uh, this month's is, uh, it is, uh, um... Oh no, I'm drawing blanks on on to- on to- their name. Toaster but- fucker. Toaster fucker. It's a toaster fucker. Yes, my brain is not working this morning. It doesn't matter. It's really great. And Adeptus Mechanicus! I got it. In the end, I got it. Uh but yeah. Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. I've been hitting the head one too many times. Bricky, tell them about like the book club. I- I'm stuff. I'm shocked you don't remember the goddamn the goddamn toaster. Like it's no. so it's it's such a common meme, like Yes, yeah, so like I remembered what the poster was, but for some reason the words Adeptus Mechanicus were not in my vocabulary this morning. It just it just wasn't there. It just wasn't but there. But like but like truly, DK, like what's the toaster gonna do? Well nothing. It's gonna get fucked. Exactly. He's 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 just a Are you saying the toaster is just a little guy? He's, he's, he's just a little guy. Woo! Yay! <laughs> oh man, that, that you know. Speaking of of just a little guy and and the loaded forty five um, uh, ACP round heading towards my head from Shy. Uh, we got we got new merch. Okay, so all right, so just a little guy was funny, but it was funny for very dumb reasons. Mm-hmm. And and because of that, I was like, all right, I kind of want to make something out of this just real quick. So we got new merch. It's a shirt and a hoodie. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I actually really like them. Like, it's it, it's it's silly, but it, it's it's kind of got a little bit of like. I don't know. It's got a There's, charm to it. It's got, it's it's got, got a little charm. Childlike charm to it. You know, it's, it, it's got good charm. Like, the, yeah. what's he gonna do? Look at him. Look at how small the Inquisitor he's, is. Yeah, he's just a little guy, and that's he's the, just a little guy. Maladorum dictum schlicta. It's the big tear. It's the warp tear. What's he gonna yeah. do? He's just a it, little it, guy. It's, it's very angry. Look at the big angry face. Yeah, big yeah, angry it's... face. So we're selling uh, a shirt and a hoodie, but we're not going to sell many of them. Just a hundred. So a hundred shirts, a hundred hoodies, because you know memes are memes, and they don't. I don't, I don't know. I don't they know don't what's going to happen. They, they don't live forever. I was like, ah, yeah. oh, it was fun. I thought it's got some some class to it. So yeah, uh, you know, hundred shirts, hundred hoodies. Check them out in the description. The the um, deal at orchid8.com where you buy two things from Adric and you get ten percent off. That's still going on. It's going to be the last this last week. So until the next episode of Adeptus, if you get spend, uh, if you buy two things, you get ten percent off your full order. Yay! Hell, hell yeah, brother! Hell yeah! And then our book yeah. club is the first Heretic with Lorgar. Lorgar! You, you fucking bitch! Burn down Monarchia. <laughs> well, actually, he, I mean, they burned out his Monarchia. Yeah, they sure did. Poor guy. Poor guy. Oh. Mm. Well, he is. He's Lorgar. He's a heretic. He is of he has many things. <laughs> among among things, he is many of them. <laughs> among of Bum bum. Among us. Among us. Among us. You know, granted, all the Among Us characters are little guys. That is very true. They are quite literally little guys. It is yeah. Among Us is staffed entirely by little guys. Wow. Great point, Bricky. You know, this is a bad this is bad timing because I just recently watched the Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode 
where I know you don't watch it, but I'm going to explain it for you anyway. Where okay, Danny DeVito, or Danny DeVito, hold, accidentally holds a, a child beauty pageant. He thought it was a regular beauty pageant, but he didn't realize it was kids. Oh, and so no. he was he was scared that everyone thought he was going to diddle kids. So I can see how he would have that fear. Sure. So he was so that was like the main driving point of the episode. And so I'm just thinking like maybe we should. Think, oh yay! It's entirely staffed by little guys. So I'm like hmm. Eh, maybe not. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. All so right. hey, I, you don't need to quote me this week because I know what we're doing. Yes, I'll quote you anyway. Oh. Nah, I'm kidding. I'm not gonna. Do we're that. doing Watcher in the Rain. Yes, we do. Oh, dude, I can't believe you got it. Oh my god. Yeah, you didn't even get wow. it. Wow. I just got it out of nowhere. Look at me. You're so smart. I have evolved to my final form, dude. Your brain volume is expanding. <laughs> my gray matter. Yes, but yes, uh, for this episode, uh, to round out our Inquisition triplet little thing going on here, I w listened to Watcher in the Rain a few weeks back, thought it was really good, involved a little bit of the Inquisition, and uh, I thought it was pretty darn fun and interesting, and I thought it'd be kind of a cool way to, to round it all out, so if you have not listened to this audio book audio drama more so yet i would recommend not watching this episode and going and listening to it yourself it's only an hour and 20 minutes long mm -hmm. it's excellent um mm -hmm. but if you you know if you just don't give a shit then i guess keep watching but you know i'm just saying we'll, we'll, we'll fucking spoiling it you know oh yeah heavily spoiling yeah. it I, I i like the way this was done with like all the sort of background ambiance of where they actually were is I I, I kind of wish all the Black Library books were like that, or all the 40k books were like that. But I guess when they're like 14, or seven to 14 hours, it's kind of hard to do that. Yeah, that's the the main difference between like an audio drama, or an audio novel, whatever they call it, as opposed to like just an audio book, where an audio book is just a reading of the book, whereas this is a, meant to be an auditory, like play almost, you yeah. know. It was just so um, much more immersive that I wish all the 40k books were like that. But it was very yeah. immersive. It was yeah. great. What? Well, well, so did you like it? I did. I I I was a big fan. Oh, I love the ending. Ah, uh, <laughs> see the ending. Oh, okay, the ending. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the ending in a bit because I think it's going to be divisive. Really? Um, I I think so. I think so. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. But yes, the the Watcher in the Rain is the story of a planet. That is being evacuated due to a warp storm incoming, mm -hmm. and there is a she's like a that's Miss Storm person, like a like a scribe, yep. guess, whatever her whatever her job is, and yeah. she is trying to get off planet, but a interrogator is thinks that she has done a big the big crime. Oh yeah, and you she think is she a, has done quite the big crime too. Yes, um, and thinks that she is a huge heretic, and yep. so he is trying to also get off the planet. But the uh, you know they got they got problems. They got problems. Yeah, she um, uh, she purposefully or he thinks she purposely like misfiled uh documents that sent faulty rebreathers to guard on a poisoned death world, and she sent food that she knowingly knew was bad to another guard regiment or something uh, which yeah obviously rotten fuck food people up yeah yeah so so the story is is mainly about um the two of them trying to get off planet uh while this warp storm is coming and, and during this period of time uh their warp storm fuckery is afoot and there appears to be a figure watching them all mm -hmm. the time and that yep. is the watcher in the rain it, it that demands weird. that demands you you uh uh look at it and yep. or state its existence it demands to be seen it demands will to be seen will you see me will you will, see me mhm mm it's uh it's really fun There's, it's got a plethora of VAs all of them really good they oh, were yeah. really good like, i feel like it has a lot more bravado than the average audiobook because it's uh it's yep. the, this kind of play type thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep, a little shorter, easier to go all in, whereas 
you know, seven hour book, you kind of got to reserve your voice a little bit. I must admit, I found it incredibly humorous how in the beginning of the book, the, um, I forget who it was, but one of like a, a short character, like one of the planetary people had a servitor and it was very <laughs> obviously voiced by Andrew Wincott of Night Lord's yeah. fame. So he sounded like Deltrian and I was yeah. like, oh shit, Deltrian. And then they throw him off a railing, like 40 stories down. Yeah. W was that planet? So they said that planet, it had been raining for like seven weeks um, was that planet actually gonna flood at all? Because they seem kind of concerned with water levels, too. And that, like, if you stayed, you might just drown. Or, like, there was, like, one of the buildings where they were like, uh-oh, I sure hope the pressure on that window holds, uh, because there's, like, so much water. Like, was that actually a threat at all, ever? I mean, obviously the warp storm is coming, and you don't want to be cut off from the Imperium, uh, but was the constant, like, fucking biblical rainstorm they were facing an issue? Uh, I think that they were gonna drown that one time when all like the scaffolding broke when they were dealing with the prisoners way back in the yeah. middle of the book. But uh, um, I th wasn't it also that like they if if they didn't get to like the hangar it would flood and they would have a ride out of there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so, so I think so, so like that. I mean, I'm assuming that maybe their excessive rain was part of this warp storm fuckery. Cause I've never like really oh, described damn. what a warp storm is. Yeah, I guess I figured they were separate uh, things that one wasn't affected by the other. But you're probably right. Warp, warp fuckery and warp storm fuckery showing up might have been like the catalyst for this absolutely insane seven week long rainstorm. Yeah, that's yeah, because yeah, like because a warp storm and it's over. We talked about warp storms a bit before, where it's like it's it's basically the concept of is a monsoon a hurricane in the middle of the ocean or. Okay, I, I don't I don't remember the, the term for it, but it's like imagine like a tornado in the middle of the ocean, right? Like it's you're trying to sail the seas of the the, the sea of souls, and there are turbulent tides. Mm. But you all like a warp storm is also like imagine a hurricane, but you're you're indoors, but the hurricane is still like affecting your house. Like, it might not yeah. destroy your house or anything, but, like, it's shaking things, like, lights are going out, things are breaking, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. A warp, like, a storm in the in the warp will bleed into the materium or will, like, shake the materium itself. So, that's why often the warp storm does weird shit in the real world. Right, um, right. Like the, the creepy stuff, or like they might screw around with people's emotions and, and feelings, or they might they might have entities around there, like lots of different kind of stuff like that. And it's uh it, it can just it just it turns on the paranormal creepy factor to eleven. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, it's fun. But anywho, the um the book is uh the auto draw was really, really solid. It's uh it's a good look into the mindset. Of an inquisitor and interrogator, <laughs> definitely. I would. They don't I would like to be that. wrong. No, they certainly don't. <laughs> they really don't like being wrong, and they will not accept the fact that they are wrong. No, yeah. they they will not. The um, the it seems to be that the point was um, because because originally they, the lady go it, the lady says she accidentally false filed those things yeah it was an accident um, i'd never done that before yes. in however many years she worked there yeah yeah like she's never done it before it was a complete accident it was just a misfile that was it but it led to what was it, like thousands dead thousands yeah. of guard regiments dead or a guard dead um and then so, that one guard regiment had to resort to cannibalism to survive yes one had to which comes up later yep. um but uh, <laughs> so she couldn't get on the escape craft and had to run back to her, whatever her her like living quarters was, uh, to get some false identification, in order to like, cause cause she's worried that she's gonna give her actual name and they're like you, it's you, you're the one. And during this time, uh, the interrogator, which is a almost inquisitor but not quite, uh, finds her and it says you heretic, heretic, you did this and sabotaged our regiments. You know, and she's constantly, like, saying it's an accident. He's like, bullshit. You're a heretic. 
Yeah, yeah, are heretic. The Lord Inquisitor says so, and his word is law. Yep. He's and, uh, Crucius, and the uh, he's Crucius, and his master, the Inquisitor, is a Atrox, or is it Atriox? I think isn't Atriox the name of the big brute in Halo? Mm, I, you like don't know. Atrox. You don't. You don't play games that are fun. Now I've played Halo one, two, and a little bit of three. You haven't even beat three. Nope. You haven't maybe, even played. Well, maybe I did. Maybe I. You haven't even played Reach. No, I played Reach. I played and beat Reach. I really liked Reach. Oh, thank God! You, you could be lying right now, but you you, you survived. Like, you're good. I I played it on stream once. I liked it a lot. Yes, Reach is quite good. Anywho, um, yes, uh, I, I forget the actual names of it of of, oh, okay. of them is, but um, yeah, they they missed their flight. Uh, from they sure it. do. <laughs> yeah, they they miss their their flight bad, so they got to find themselves new uh, a new passage, and that's that's kind of where the the book really, I think, really comes into its own is the the dialogue between the two of them uh, during this during this kind of period of time where they're trying to find a way out, and it's the natural like she's in cuffs, but they're having a lot of problems. Like she really needs to not be in cuffs, but the yeah. guy's like, "Fuck you! I'm keeping you in cuffs." Yeah, you're a heretic. Why would I free you from your cuffs? Just so you're gonna run away and try and kill me? Mm -mm. Yeah, so it's uh, it's got a good a good bit of that, and and you know she's adamant about about this. Like she, oh, you, yeah. she's like I I didn't fucking do it. I misfiled paperwork. You son of a bitch. Yep. And and for a very good portion of the book of the audio book, you believe her. Yeah, I mean, I I I believed her. She seemed. Um, she seemed like she was being honest, and it just seemed like I was just like, oh yeah, this uh, this this interrogator, he's just he's an evil piece of shit Imperium, and he is just you know, uh, she was falsely accused, but they believe that she's guilty. This is going into that whole like, oh, an Inquisitor's never wrong, blah blah blah, and you know, I'm gonna kill you anyway. Um, but yeah, that's what I thought as well for like the whole book is it was just a douchebag uh, interrogator. That was uh, falsely taking her in. I really did like the interrogator, though, as a character. I thought he was really fun. Mm -hmm. I thought, like, like he's obviously a, a total douche, but they have some great exchanges, particularly like, so, so uh, you know, we, we haven't talked much about the Watcher in the Rain. Um, mm -hmm. The Watcher in the Rain is is part of that warp storm fuckery. Yeah. Uh, he, it's it's an entity, just just like a figure. We don't really know what it looks like at all. Mm -hmm. It's just a figure, and it's it's always like kind of looking at you, but it's it's looking at you from four stories up in one of the windows, yep. or across the like a landing pad. It just, it just stands there. Yep. And it's always watching. Always watching, and for the entire time, the scribe is saying like, "I don't see anything. There's nothing. There's nothing there." But the other guy is like, "What the fuck do you mean you don't see anything? Like, there's." There's literally a dude. You. It's you like doing? right there. What do you mean? Yep. And she refuses to acknowledge its existence. Yes, and it, it keeps on coming back around. And uh, one of the more creepy moments of the book is when they're getting a uh, get. Or she was getting a blood sample done by a servo skull head. <laughs> and he, after getting said blood sample to, to test that who she is and all that kind of stuff, the servo skull just kind of starts chanting like will is will you see me right yeah yeah will you see me it's will like hey, it's like blood type dip zip zip this thinking will you see me will you see me will you see like just over over and over again like okay Not that's bro. weird <laughs> yeah, i don't like they're that they're not supposed to do that they're not programmed to do that what the fuck isn't it so funny though that the servo skull literally has a human brain in it like yeah, that's always so weird to think about that there's a human brain in there. But it makes sense in a, in a funny way because that means it can be affected by things that affect humans. Yeah, so that servo skull could totally be affected by all that warp fuckery and the uh, watcher in the rain because it's yeah, it's got a, it's got a human brain in there, so it's totally susceptible. Yeah, a lot of the the plot points aren't like too big to hit until the end, uh, because a lot of it's just kind of the journey through and and adds a whole lot of really. Really good tension. I I really liked how they did the sound design and the and the creep factor. It, it's oh, yeah. it's more of a thriller than like a horror horror. Yeah, yeah. 
definitely more thriller than like jump scare horror. Oh my god, look at the blood and guts and gore type of thing. But yeah. But they, I really liked the part when they went to the penal colony block or like the prisoner block. Mm -hmm. And it's just this, they're just all like fucking insane. Because not <laughs> only were they already insane, but the warp storms arrived. Yeah. They formed this little tribe, this little cult. What was the dude, like, the dude on, the, like, the podium? He's like, your request, like, your request to know where this docking station is will be figured out in three to five weeks. Thank you. And he gets all <laughs> fucking pissed off. It's like, we have procedures. Procedures. What are we, like, you need to be processed. What but are we, I like, animals? We can, yeah, we can speed up your processing. And it turns out processing is just you getting fucking mauled and just yeah. dissected and eaten and... Yeah, processing. Enter literally processing. Me, yeah, literally means to be processed. Yeah, that, that, that was processing, funny. Yeah, yeah. That gave me a giggle. I liked that. Yeah. Um. The the V the VAs for the for the prisoners were also really fun. I, I still love how everyone in the Warhammer world is some form of British often, <laughs> and, and they get like the football instead of the the orc variants. Obviously, they get like the football hooligan voice mm -hmm. sometimes, and it's really good. Yeah, it was really good. Um, but. Uh, you know, as they as they make their way along and all that, the um, they they get some interesting reveals. One, the the watcher gets really close, oh, and yeah. and gets very loud, and that caught me off guard, um, yeah. in the book. But the interrogator has like gets knocked out and has this like flashback kind of sorta, yep. um, which also props to the props to the Lord Inquisitor VA there. He was proper, proper oh, evil yeah. sounding, definitely. Um, yeah, he had a he had a flashback to um, like the uh, Inquisitor was like, oh well, what do you, what do you think of this person's innocence now that you've seen the case? He's like, what? Ex uh, excuse me, I'm not allowed to think. Uh, you you said he was guilty, so he's guilty. He's like, yeah, but what do you think? He's like, uh, no, I don't I don't get to. Th I'm not paid to think. I just I just you you said it. I can't. He's like, oh, good job. Good job. That's right. Yeah, good. You're not paid to think. Good. You just listen to me. Good job. Good job. Good job. It's like, whoa. <laughs> you, you you find out that that he it, you find out that for his test to become interrogator, he had to he did not have his torture kit, his excruciator kit. Mm -hmm. So he had to utilize the tools at his disposal to mm -hmm. get a confession or information out of this one person who we find out was actually innocent. Yeah, she was actually innocent. <laughs> He's like, and, well you find, and you find out that said person was actually his mom. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's what the Inquisitor fucks with him with. He's like, this, per this lady like works like four dead-end jobs to get you into the school of Progenium so you could have a good education. She like did all this stuff for you. She constantly loved you and cared for you, and you tortured her with like nails and crowbars. Uh, yeah. because, and she was innocent. It's like, how's that fucking make you feel? And he's like, like tying my boots. Yeah, he it it, it doesn't feel. I don't I don't feel anything, sir. It doesn't yeah, it's feel like, like anything. It's like, oh boy. Yeah, oh. It, it it really that was why I want, part of the reason I wanted to do this one because I was like, yeah, the inquisitors are monsters. They sure are. To put him through that is, oh god. And that's that's also that added to me thinking that um, uh, the what was her name, Britta Vaughn or something? Uh, uh, the 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 scribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that also added to me thinking that she was innocent because it was like, man, like look at what the Inquisitor did to his apprentice. Like, and there's, like, there's no way she's not innocent. And this is just a harrowing story of the scribe getting away from this terrible uh, Inquisitor that's um, hitting her with these false charges. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, uh, I guess it's also interesting because despite the fact that, you know, this interrogator was like, yeah, I, I tortured and murdered my mom and I could give a shit, <laughs> uh, was is is great for the oh my god these people are awful situation but it also it, it's it's one of those things like oh my god who would ever do something so heinous f to like make someone do something so heinous and then and then you you can imagine them already justifying it to themselves like well look at this chick she she killed thousands because of her false paperwork like 
what's one lady to this like if if i hadn't hired this inquisitor more would be dead like you could see them justifying themselves that way for their just awful oh, awful yeah. deeds yeah yeah definitely um Ugh. but uh to the end to the end of the book or the novel they, they eventually get themselves some uh some transport they start flying away from the sky filled with tentacles because <laughs> Cause it's, it's a warp, warp storm fuckery. yep because it's the fucking warp and uh we get our we get our big reveal yeah we do get our big well she uh she explains to him first what the watcher in the rain is right before yes the big reveal well it's warp storm fuckery that we know that yeah 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 um, but it's but like it, uh, it, it's like an entity that like wants to be seen. It it actually wants you to look at it and acknowledge it because it it'll like reflect back all of your sins and all of your mistakes. Yes, like it'll that, right? yeah, it'll kind of like reach into the deepest recess of your consciousness and mm -hmm. force you to like look at the horrible, horrible entity that you've become. Mm -hmm. Um, and if acknowledging its existence in general causes it which is which is a great a great concept because that means oh yeah because during the entire book you're wondering does she actually not see it or is it just other people yeah. or you know now you realize no she she did see it but she was choosing yep. against acknowledging it which is which is an interesting it, it keeps you think it keeps you guessing like yes. is it just in this guy's head or is it only showing up for him or yada yada Yep, it isn't until the end that you realize the Watcher in the Rain was actually there. She knew it was there, but she just chose not to uh, acknowledge it. And it was it was still there outside of their ship pod, or outside of their ship, <laughs> yeah. taking the Im like, outside of the fucking, like, uh, lander bay, knocking on the door with the sound of the interrogator's mother. Yep, like and he wanted to open the door. Because mm -hmm. at this point, he's right fucked in the head. Oh, yeah. Proper he, yeah, he's been he's been taken uh taken advantage by this warp entity and the storm quite quite a bit. You know, you know, interesting quick side note. Um you, you know the Chaos Imperial Knights, so Chaos Knights? Yeah. Um they actually have a new rule in the game called uh, uh a dread like uh like a, a dread test like or dread, dread test. abilities. Yeah. Um, basically, it's the concept that with, with like this harb, it's called Harbingers of Dread, and it says when Chaos Knight, where Chaos Knights tread, the skies grow unnaturally dark, and the dread of the warp permeates the battlefield. None are immune to its shadowy touch. For those, it does not paralyze the fear and despair, are racked with hallucinations and driven mad. So like these these knights are such powerful like entities of chaos when they walk around like the storm and of the warp like churns and and, and coagulates in the sky and just Damn. through their existence alone. It's really cool. Damn, so they're like walking warp storms almost? They have a slight little bit of a walking warp storm vibe. In fact, they actually the one of the newest knights is actually a psyker and the they every a psychic power is is it called a discipline like Telekinesis discipline, like mm -hmm. just like a very hive mind discipline. There's this yeah. called warp storm discipline. Oh, sick! Yeah, oh, that's it's, dope. That's it's super really dope. cool. Oh, here's one. What was it? the storm malevolent, drawn forth by words of power? A storm from the depths of the warp surges up against the skin of reality. Its lashing tendrils tear the veil until corrupting energies spill through to taint all they touch. Trapped amidst this maelstrom of cursed unreality, the enemy are left horribly exposed to attack and may even be driven back through the pulsating warp rent to suffer a horrible fate. Oh, that's boy. cool. So you've suffered a terrible fate. Well, it, it's like it, it's basically like them ripping a small eye of terror. The warp comes in there to cause problems. Some, some they'll grab and pull them in. Jesus, that's dope as hell. Anyway, sorry, that was yeah. cool. That is very cool. That is yeah yeah. Anyway, uh, other other big reveal in the book. Yes. Um, yes, because he tries to open the thing and then she shoots him in the leg. Yeah, she. I mean, she has to. He's gonna open the damn door. He's gonna open the airlock in a ship gonna, in the, in yeah, with a warp storm space. outside. Yes, there's nothing good that happens that comes from opening that door. She has to. 
Yes. But, um, but you go go ahead, DK. What's but, tell she? Because she's constantly saying throughout the book, "I will tell you my story. I will tell you the truth." Yeah, she what? she wants to make a full confession. Yes, right? full I confession. I want to make a full confession, and like um, I don't know. He comes out of it, right? Uh, I don't I don't think she like uh aids his bullet wound or anything, but uh, he comes out of it. And uh, he's like, oh, what have I been doing, man? You're totally not guilty. Here, let me go ahead and Vox record. Hello, I am uh, Inquisitor. I'm the interrogator. And uh, damn, she, she wasn't guilty. I, uh, I made a mistake, followed the wrong person. Uh, if you should get this, uh, let, let her go. She's fine. She's good people. Everything's fine. Happy do da day. Inquisitor out. Uh, and exactly she, those words. Those words exactly. Happy do da day. Inquisitor out. Um, and then she uh, she lets everybody know that she's like, nah, you were right. I did all that stuff on purpose. I get a huge thrill out of it. I love killing these. My job is so mundane. This is the only thing that brings me pleasure. And yeah. I purposefully sent bad rebreathers, rotten food, and man, I love it. And thanks for the Vox recording, because that's going to make my life so much easier. And the whole what? reason I didn't want the Watcher to, to, to acknowledge the Watcher is because I'd see a billion dead bodies, because I have killed way more people than you think. Well, hold on. You're missing a very important part of the story. Uh-oh, what did I miss? The first one was an accident. Oh, that's right. The first one was actually an accident. That's you're yes. right. That's she. Fair. She was the mundane scribe for a while. And that yeah. first filing was a genuine accident. She was scared shitless. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. That someone like him would would arrive. She's like, oh my god, what have I done? I am actually a dead woman. Um, but then that right. broke her out of this like trance. Because mm -hmm. I, I know this, like, like when you're doing, I don't know, when like you're doing your taxes or, or when you're doing like, like anything really fucking mundane, you kind of like, like the runner's high where you're just in it and like minutes turn to hours and you just don't even know, realize it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, 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 it broke her out of that feeling. And so yeah. she got like kind of a fucking high off of it. You know, she was like, oh my God, I... I'm in control of my life again. Yeah. And, and so she, she went on a spree. I was about to say, like, they found the two misfilings. She said that she did a, like a like a hundred or more a day for like yeah. a year. Yeah. Like her her death toll is in the billions. Is genuinely in the billions. Yeah, she she thinks it's in the billions because that's why she refused to acknowledge the watcher. Is because if she ever acknowledged it or looked at it, she was like, I'm gonna see billions of bodies. And I don't bro, want that. Bro, what if the watcher was like an envoy of Zinch? And he was like, Hey, Ooh. big fan. Okay. <laughs> big fan. <laughs> Hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you done good. Hey, you want to be a demon prince? Like, we'll make you a demon prince. Like, it's cool. <laughs> Ask the big man upstairs for something, because, like, God, like, few people can do this well. Yeah, well done. Really. Just hands down. Good job. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's just, it, it, I don't know. It's just, like, yeah, it's the, the most fascinating part of the whole thing is that chaos has nothing to do with it. Yeah, there's well, uh, yeah, that's true. Chaos has nothing to do with it. I was gonna say the warp storm, but that's not inherently chaos. Yeah, there's this is not a chaos story at all. There's no chaos here. It's, I mean, we talk about penal legions and things like that often, but like like a murder or something. But it's it's crazy to to think that we really don't have any like serial killer stories, you know? Because yeah. that's, that's essentially what she is. Like Shy, Shy makes a great point. It's basically a serial killer origin story. Like yeah. it's basically just a serial killer story. She is a serial killer of the billions variety. Um, yes. But she wasn't motivated by chaos or dark powers or something like that. She just hated her fucking job so much and she hated what the Imperium turned into turned her into. 
Mm-hmm. She was just tired of her mundane life, and she got a thrill out of the uh, the misfiling one. Um, yeah. And and what does she say? Like she uh she um she's like, oh, remember how you told me that one guard regiment switched to uh, cannibalism? Boy, that gave me a chuckle. The Imperium eating the Imperium. Oh, the irony. And it was like, oh boy. Yeah, you, the Imperium mean the Imperium alive. Yeah. Yeah, she just she she just you know, it's she basically took the equivalent of taking a giant shit on her desk. You know, she's oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely fucking hates her job and the yep. Imperium. And who she works for. Yep. 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 Uh th but there there's one more twist. Bricky, I'll I'll give you the honor of doing ah. the the special twist at the end. So she, so the, during this period of time when she shot the interrogator, he's basically bleeding out and he's barely even lucid at this point. But yeah. she, you could tell that she really badly wanted him to hear the whole thing. Like, like this has been her like purveying moment of justice for so long. She's like yep. been waiting for this moment. Um, but then the guy, the guy dies. So it's like, oh god, what are we gonna do next? But she ends yeah, up getting a getting a hail mm -hmm. uh, via another ship. And uh, it's a couple. It's uh, I think it's a guardsman ship or like a, like a Valkyrie or something like that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, yeah, she wanted to brag, and uh, you have a perspective shift, and you realize that that other ship contained the guard regiment that she gave the rotten food to, that was cannibalizing, yep. Yep. and they were like, "It's just does anyone else on the ship with her? Is it just her?" She's all like, right, well, her, all right. her, she said her friend died earlier, so we can use him too. But I think they literally say like body's probably still warm. Like, yeah. all right, you're, just, it's like all, all right, enter enter docking bay. This go, go and approach Victor, and she's like, oh, thank the Praise Imperium, the and, Imperium. I love and then the, the book Imperium. just fucking ends. It's great. Yeah. I think they specifically say just don't let anyone see you take the bodies to the kitchen. Yeah, it's not, it's not like that. It, it's it's it's. That's that's what, why I was a little bit unsure about the ending, because I don't know if one people will like the fact that it's not a chaosy thing and how the Watcher really isn't a factor. Yeah, it's kind of not. The the Watcher like, is more just some weird creepiness, but it's actually not really the point of the book. Yeah, it at is all. all internal, just bad people in the Imperium. Like the Watcher doesn't force their hand the watcher doesn't force them to do anything it's just this sort of creeper that's wants wants you to look at it but it doesn't force the, it doesn't force her to do any of the gnarly shit that she does it doesn't force the interrogator to torture his mom it's no, just kind of on the outlier just sort of creeping around and i think that's one of the reasons i'm actually i, I like it a decent amount is because that has such a uh it's such a different way to go about it. I think that might be the re like it's how do I explain it? It's kind of like on the first listen, I, I I might be having a different thought in my head about the book, preconceived notion. Yeah. About the Watcher in the Rain, and then realizing it doesn't really have anything to do with the Watcher in the Rain, and realizing it doesn't really have anything to do with chaos, kind of throws you off in the beginning. Yeah, um definitely. and but then I think the more I sat on it, the more I thought about it, the more I ended up liking it. Um, also, we all like a good story where someone gets their comeuppance. Oh, yeah. That's that's why I like the ending so much. Because for... When the ending happened, I was like, oh, my God, are they gonna... Is she gonna get away with it? Like, is she is she about to get, like, rescued and get away with it after all that? After revealing all the horrible, terrible shit that she's... Is she gonna get away with it? No way! She actually killed him! I was expecting the, the interrogator to be like, ha-ha, fooled you, bitch! And then, like, you know, punch her in the spine or something. Uh, and then when he was like actually dead, I was like, "What the fuck is she gonna? Is she gonna get away?" And then once it was made clear that those guard were like the cannibals that she made, I was like, "Oh hell yeah, best ending ever! Fuck this bitch!" Like I was so happy um, when that when that was made clear. Oh, I was so happy. I was like, "Man, you get what you deserve, Murray. You get what you fucking deserve. <laughs> you get what you fucking deserve." Yeah, it was one of those. I, I, I loved it. I was actually, yeah, I wasn't sure. I, I know that, like, like Shy mentioned, serial killers love to brag, yeah. uh, and I was almost kind of, I, in a weird way, I almost would have liked that that rug pull, it because she almost, well, no, she, they actually kind of already did. Cause she didn't really get a chance to brag, like she she bragged to a dying corpse. Yeah, she bragged to the uh, interrogator's corpse, basically. I think he was, well, 
Yeah, he's he's pretty much dead by that point, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, he's basically dead by that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was he was certainly dying. That's that's that's. For yeah, sure. yeah. Um, but he's uh, yeah, he he's. It's a very it's a very interesting little little situation there. I like it a lot. I I really enjoy. The I really enjoy the book. I really enjoy the difference in it. I like audio novels a lot, or audio like plays a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's just it's nice to take a, a story like that and and make it so. I don't know. Like you can retell this story in almost any other medium, and it could probably work. Like you yeah. just just take it, change it to a, a a prospective criminal cop and a ghost. Yo, yeah, you know. Definitely. Yeah. Like you can you can completely do it. Yeah. 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 But it, they just took it and they imperiumized it and they they forty k it up and it's yeah. great. It's so oh, much yeah. fun. It is. It is a hoot. And it's 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 a quick read. Like you said, it's what, an hour and twenty minutes. Like it it's 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 quick and it's in depth and it's just it's it's a good story. I I, I, thoroughly, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. I really really liked it and uh, I think that so long as it um. It main, you know, well, it, it is it is maintaining its uh its strength pretty well. I think it, it, I don't know how popular it was. I really liked it, obviously, but I don't remember if it was an over extremely popular when it came out because it came out like a, I think a year ago, give or take. Um, how did you find it? Uh, I think someone made a post about it on some somewhere, or or maybe talked about it in our Discord. And I was oh, like, okay. "That's interesting." Cool. And I looked up the I looked up the the cover art, and I was like, "This cover art looks great." And then I realized it was an audio novel. I'm like, "Oh, those are short. I like those." So I decided yeah. to read it. Cool. Or listen to it, you know. Go oh, on. Yeah, good. it's good, 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 good. Also, there's a ton of like very popular people in that book. Like, you have Richard Reed, who we had on, who does a lot of Necron mm -hmm. books, was uh, in it. Andrew Wincott, who did the Night Lords books, was in it. I'm not familiar with the um, with the female VA uh, who made who did the main character, but she was really really good. Oh yeah, she was fantastic. She was, she yeah. was the star of that book. I'm not quite sure exactly when um or uh what other stuff that she's done, but she was very very good. So yeah, I was quite pleased. Yeah, it's a good book. Good good quick read. If you haven't read it, well, I guess if you've gotten to this point in the video and you haven't read it, well, I guess there's not really a whole lot of reason to because you know the whole plot now. Uh, still, is 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 good time, good book, absolutely good suggestion, and and I, like I'm, you said, I'm I think glad. it falls it falls in with like uh, the um, uh, interrogator inquisition stuff that we've been doing. It's a nice way to sort of wrap that up and get a look at like interrogators and inquisitors and how fucking weird they are. So yeah, they, they nice are little, they're kind of nice little bow on it. Yeah, they are certainly interesting. Yeah, they're they're. There's something. <laughs> I'm never wrong. I said they're guilty. They're guilty. That's it. Now kill your mom. What? <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you should kill your mom now. Now. Whew. And oh, then the in insta interrogator's like, okay, sure. He just, he just does it. I don't give a fuck. Yep. Oh. Well. Horrifically. Horrifically. Interesting little guy. Oh, shy. Shy's. Oh, I knew it. In typical shy fashion, she hates the little guys meme and then starts to use the little guys meme herself. Yeah, because she realized all of our fans loved it, and she doesn't want to be perceived as a humorless tyrant. A hu a humorless tyrant. Ooh, a tyrant. Yeah, tyrant. I mean, she's just a little shy. She's just a little shy. Yeah, you're not she a little gal shy. You're just a little shy. Just a little shy. Just a little shy. Our female just... viewers can be just a little gal, but you shy are just a little shy. Yeah, I'm sorry. There, there's a better a better phrase for you, and therefore you have to take it. Yeah, sorry, shy. Actually, no, I'm not sorry. That's Fuck what I was about to say. Bull bullshit, you're sorry. <laughs> Next week on Adeptus Ridiculous, Bricky gets a new co-host. Next week, guys, that's ridiculous. <laughs> DK is found uh, in, in a the, river, in the... face down. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. Uh, it, there's a fun little episode here to round out the Inquisitor stuff. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, check out the Just a Little Guy merch while it's around. Yeah. Only the hundo of the both. And um, yeah, I mean, besides that, we'll just uh, it's pretty fun. We'll we'll uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. That's ridiculous. You know, a nice little, nice little easy one to run us out. Little, little guys out.